She is me, she is you, she is all of us. Thank you for being with us today. We're super excited. Buckle up, we're gonna have an amazing session. Uh, but women earn 84% less. Women invest less than men and women live six years longer than men. So that is a huge thing to think about. So excited to introduce our speaker today. So it's closed over a thousand deals and trained more than 87,000. One more time, 87,000 investors since two the point where I was making more money working part-time as a real estate investor than I was working full-time in financial planning analysis. Hello, hello. Welcome to She. She builds, she owns, she invests. She is me, she is you, she is all of us. Thank you for being with us today. We're super excited. Buckle up. We're going to have an amazing session. Um, so join us. Thank you so much for being here. We are in a mission to help 1 million women create wealth through real estate while we foster personal, professional, and spiritual growth. So thank you so much for joining us on this mission. Uh, disclaimer, uh, every investment has risk. We do not charge anything for, for these sessions. However, we ask you that if you are looking to start investing, connect with us. Uh, we would love to hear where you are in your journey. Uh, every investment has a risk. Do your detail again. Uh, every speaker that we bring offer products or services, and we do not endorse any of them. We bring, bring them because they are our mentors, friends, uh, but do your detail again. Okay, a little bit about Massive Capital. We are a vertically integrated company. Uh, we have uh, uh, multi-family deals across Texas, Georgia, North Carolina, and Denver. We also are partnered with uh, Realty One. They do new construction for retail centers. And combined, we have over half billion dollars of assets under management. Uh, as I said, we are vertically integrated. We have our, comp uh, our construction company, leasing company, uh, equity, uh, brokerage, and everything in-house. Uh, so if you want to start investing or just curious about how you can also start doing deals, connect with us uh, and we're happy to share with you. All right. Well, why do we love real estate? This is uh, my favorite slide so far. Uh, why uh, cash flow? That's one of the benefits. Uh, Maria, tell us yes. about cash flow. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think since I was editing it, it didn't let me change it because I was still on it, but that's okay. Um, but I love that we have some new statistics and it's a little scary to talk about, but women earn 84% less than men. Women save 50% less than men. Women invest less than men and women live six years longer than men. So that is a huge thing to think about. So cash flow is so important. Real estate is a favorite option as it can provide a dependable source of cash flow through retail investing and passive income. And that's why cash flow is so important when you're thinking about real estate investing. And Jasmine, why do you think long-term appreciation is so important? Well, so it turns out that 81% of women have their wealth in cash. And that was me. That's how I started. I was just saving money, having my money in the bank and making 0.001%. And I was like, what should I do with my money? And I was, while well, I figure something out, let me buy a piece of real estate. You know, that's the safest place to put my money. And for sure, I know that it's going to appreciate. So, if, you know, whatever happens, at least it's going to appreciate. So that's what got me real estate. I bought my first piece of land and then the rest is your story. Uh, Candace, tell us a little bit about the leverage. Yeah, so I'm um, one of the 43% of the women in the world who have career breaks. I've been a serial entrepreneur my whole life, but um, several times in uh, my life, I've had to stop to raise kids, have children, uh, be the designated daughter, take care of an ailing mother. 
And by having, you know, two, three, four different income streams coming in from cash flows and apartments and uh, other commercial real estate that I've invested in over the year, it's allowed me to have a career break and not sacrifice our family income. So we all need, as women, uh, multiple income streams coming in because life happens. And so, Maria, tell us about the diversification, because I know yeah. that's a favorite of yours. It is because I'm showing one of my first properties here in that picture. It is um, one in North Carolina, which has taken a big hit with the with the uh, weather right now. So we do have our thoughts and prayers in the those different locations. But I do have some, some crazy facts. Again, is the average women keeps 81% of their wealth in cash in their accounts. And we know that these accounts are not going to be moving when they're just sitting in a bank. And 70% of women have never met a financial advisor. Now, I know that we don't consider ourselves financial advisors, Advisors, but as my friend Jasmine always says, is that she kind of feels like a therapist with a calculator. And when we are helping our investors get into these deals, I do, I do like that feel somewhat like a therapist as we're helping our investors get into these deals. And I mean, with all these women that are keeping so much of their wealth in in cash like we've got to move that somewhere and we've got to diversify it into properties and really get it to move for us and i think jasmine you're going to talk about some tax benefits for us yeah uh that's probably the second thing that got me real estate just having uh tax benefits at the at the end of the year uh, through cost segregation pretty much what we say in the irs is like hey the property is depreciating I have paper losses. Uh, well, we know that the property is appreciating and it's cash flowing, but it just helps to offset our income. So, of course, we're not CPAs, but those are some of the benefits and our, you know, through our personal experiences that why we got in real estate. Um, but, Maria, uh, let's talk about our speaker today. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, oh, the amazing speaker that we have. I'm so excited to introduce our speaker today. It is a huge, a huge honor to have Shanoa with us. I mean, for those of you who know her, she has been uh, working with us and we've been able to work and learn from, alongside with her. So we are very excited for, for just her to be here. She is a fourth generation Texan and real estate powerhouse and has closed over a thousand deals and trained more than 80 7,000, one more time, 87,000 investors since 2003. She is the owner and operator of Texas REIAs and the largest association of real estate investors in Texas. With a presence in major markets such as Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, and San Antonio, as a licensed realtor, broker, and the leader of Austin's Real Estate Association, Shoa continues to invest, inspire, and mentor or new investors. At Texas REIs, she fosters a community where members share knowledge, collaborate on deals, act access funding and grow together with a strong belief in building both networks and net worth together collective learning. Shanoa provides free resources and blueprints at texasstarterkit.com to help others succeed in real estate. Shanoa, we are so happy to have you here and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi guys. Hi gals. Uh, good to have you guys. Uh, good to be on with you guys. Excited to uh, share a little bit about my journey and maybe uh, bring some other folks along for the ride. So that's one of the blessings that uh, I've been able to do, not just make it for myself, but also bring others along. So I, the quote from Muhammad Ali says, 
He said, service to others is the price that we pay for our room here on this earth. Uh, so one of the ways that I serve is through Texas RIA. So I'm always uh, having meetings and uh, sharing knowledge, sharing information, sharing best practices. Uh, and sometimes I'm unscrambling someone's egg that they scrambled up uh, before they met me. Uh, so, but uh, it's one of the things that I really enjoy. And I, I got my first deal as part of the RIA. I found my first lender as part of the RIA. I found my first, you know, uh, you know, contractor, my first contract, my first attorney, all of that is part of the RIA. And I feel a debt of service and gratitude to that RIA. So I continue to, and I don't know at this point if I'm paying it forward or paying it back, but it's <laughs> part of, it's going to be part of my legacy. I always say Texas RIAs was my baby even before I had a baby. Uh, so, and it's something I'm really passionate about. Uh, I'm often asked, what do you do? What, you know, sometimes, and I'll often say I'm a real estate investor. And if they probe a little deeper and if they kind of are really interested in it, a lot of times I'll tell people that I help people quit jobs that they hate so they can do things that they love. <laughs> it feels amazing. That's awesome. Thank you so much for he being here, uh, Shanoa. We're super excited. So let's just start, you know, from humble beginnings. Uh, you talk about like everything is started at RIA, but tell us a little bit about your background and what got you to, to the RIA and, you know, everything that happened after. Okay. So I'm a fourth generation real estate investor, but probably like many of us on this call, when I was a young woman, instead of my family playing. To, uh, real estate, my family said, like what many of our families said to us, which is go get a good education, right? And go get a job and go work for someone else. And when I was a young woman and watching what my you know, grandparents did and watching what my parents did, I would often introduce my mom as this is my mom, the slumlord. And when I went, finished college and started working in corporate America and I was working my butt off in corporate America, um, I had to change the way that I introduced my mom to, this is my mom, the millionaire. This is my mom, the multimillionaire. And still to this day, there's something that just, that I'm swallowing pride. I don't know what, uh, that, that stays with me to this day. And I watched what she was doing. I watched what I was doing. And ironically, I was, you know, she had said like, go get an education, you know, and, and Jasmine, like you, I got my MBA from Rice. So I'm like, I'm going to go and I'm going to go show you guys how it's done. I'm going to go and work in corporate America. And then I'm like, well, wait a second, this isn't working out the exact way that I have planned. And we took another, I took another look at real estate. And at the time my husband uh, had just lost his job. So he's like, yeah, you, you, you know, a little something about real estate, don't you? And I'm like, oh yeah, I, I, I do. And so I stepped out of my corporate America job. It was interesting. Um, when I, when I was working, I, I was working what I call the second shift. So I was working my corporate America job from eight until six or later. And then when I got home, I would work what I called my second shift. And I'd work my second shift from roughly 8 p.m. until 11 p.m. And then I'd work my second shift on the weekend. And for any of the folks that are on the call that are working in corporate America, let me tell you, the second shift will set you free. You just have to put in the time to be able to get there, right? So for me, the second shift set me free. It allowed me to build that bridge. So as I was listening to a lot of the stats that you guys were sharing at the beginning, what I'm hearing is, you know, some fear, right? And I'm hearing some need for security. So for me, I wanted to build a bridge instead of just quitting, right? So instead of just saying, I'm quitting, quitting my corporate America job, I don't know if this real estate thing is going to be for me. Um, I went ahead and built the bridge until the point where I was making more money working part-time as a real estate investor than I was working full-time in financial planning and analysis. So at, uh, at one point, I kind of tried to get fired. I don't know if you've ever tried to get fired. Um, they were firing everyone around me. Everyone around me was getting fired. And I'm like, I think I'm close. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get on this next layoff, you know? So, and 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 I knew, I knew that it was the end. They wouldn't, they wouldn't fire me. Um, but they gave me everyone else's work as they fired other people. Some of you guys have been in that position before, right? 
So the straw that broke the camel's back for me was we had a team building event and the team building event, you know, when I first started at this company, like, you know, it'd be like, you know, champagne, you know, poker night, you know, we do some habitat for humanity trips. So those are all fun. But as the company was like on, on the income wasn't coming in, right. All of the, all of the perks just got pared back. And because they had fired over half the company towards the end of the time that I was there, our, our team building event was something that they called clean a cube. Yeah. So imagine going to collect all of everyone's red staplers, right? I don't know if you guys have seen that, seen that movie, my red stapler. Okay. But imagine going and it's like, we were organizing paper clips organizing post-it notes, organizing pens, um, because we were moving from two buildings into one. Wow. And I was like, this is just really not what it's supposed to be like. And I'm having more fun and I'm making more money in real estate. And when I think of um, freedom, so we're all here for some degree of freedom, right? Uh, legacy, time, money, emotion, identity, location, we all want all of those types of freedom in our lives. And as I stepped away, finally stepped away from my corporate America job, I was able to achieve that. And as part of my journey and also my husband's journey as well, we started to talk about the deals that we were doing as we were doing them. So we were giving and we were sharing and we were saying, I'll fund your deal or I'll partner on your deal. And that brought, that made us magnetic, right? So the more we can spend time in our life creating that magnetism, that energy around us, the more likely it is that we're going to be even more successful, I, I believe. And, and that's something that's worked out for me, giving a lot and uh, sharing a little bit about my journey and sharing how other people can take some of those. Sometimes what might feel like a very difficult step or something that you're unsure about or something that may not be giving you the security that you know, some of us as women and me in particular, like I, I like that security, right? And I think that's why a lot of people, um, as you guys gave the stats, keep a lot of women, more women keep money in a checking account or a savings account as opposed to really investing it uh, because there's some fear there. And I think a lot of the things that you guys are doing as part of She and uh, you guys are doing as part of Massive Capital is to eliminate some of that fear. How do we eliminate fear? We, get, we grow in competency, we grow in our network, we grow in action, and all of those things increase our confidence so that we can take the money out of our checking account and invest it in something that's going to build and give us higher returns than what otherwise would be. But a lot of times we only feel comfortable doing that after we have that knowledge, that network. And as part of Texas RIAs, the things that I always say is this is where you're going to find the tools. This is where you're going to find the training. And this is where you're going to find the tribe. And with all of those things, you build up that competency. And with all those things, you build up your confidence. And with all of those things, is an opportunity for you to win. So that really leads me to, to my question, uh, Shanoa. And you, you mentioned several times the relationship you have with Phil and, and your spouse. And, and you've talked about how, you know, you left your, your first J-O-B to, to actually launch into a career that you really love. So tell us a little bit about how the two of you work together, because you've built this huge empire together. And uh, tell us who got the spark first in commercial real estate and how you both came to the conclusion that working together in the bet in the business was going to be more beneficial than doing your, your separate things. So if I were to go back to the beginning, 2003, uh, we joined our local real estate investor association. Um, the, the person who was running it at the time said, Hey, you look pretty organized. Um, would you be our membership coordinator? It doesn't pay anything. You get free membership into the association at the time. It was like $60 a year. And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take that job. And it's just going to be about five, 10 hours a week. And so I was making about uh, 25 cents an hour, maybe, right? Doing that job. But I got to know every single person that came into that association. 
I got to know the people who were doing stuff, the people who were just talking about stuff. I got to know the people who had money. I got to know the people who had deals. I got to know the people who had resources. And, you know, um, that, that was that to me that, you know, is leverage, right? If you know those people, if you have a big tribe, a big community. And at, at some point, the person who was running the Real Estate Investor Association just stopped coming to the meetings. So it was like, okay, now you're president. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I wasn't really expecting that. And then I eventually bought it from her. So we kind of make it made up, you know, as a financial person, we're going to do a make versus buy spreadsheet on this thing. And, but there was a lot of goodwill in the name. So we ended up buying it uh, from her and then growing it to um, beyond Austin and to San Antonio and then Dallas and then in Houston. And our network really began to grow and expand from there. And we met more and more people and we were doubling down in residential real estate. And as we started to expand in our community and look at some commercial ventures, we were taking some of our winnings from residential and investing that passively into a lot of commercial deals. And I was, I was trying to add it up before I got in this call. And I, was, I think I have about a million dollars passively in other people's deals. And I've got about 4 million uh, or more in some of our own. So, and then I own a bunch of residential rental properties that kind of, you know, fund whatever I want. Um, and that's a little bit about my journey. So I hooked up with someone who was ahead of me on the commercial side and started, you know, talking to them about commercial investing and started to, you know, help us use what I learned and then take it back to the people. So, and as I'm taking that back to the people, I'm getting more people and it's just kind of a cycle like that. So that's a little bit about how our journey started. Um, mostly again, just passively writing a check, right? So I live, breathe, eat, sleep, gargle, snore, you know, real estate. And I, I know, you know, when I think about the stock market and when I was in corporate America, I, I said, I want to keep my 401k, you know, my IRA over here, and I'm going to keep separate money over here to be able to invest in real estate. And at one point I realized that I know more about real estate than the average person. And I know less about the stock market than the MIT grad who is in, you know, five different screens, you know, and just studying, eating, breathing, living, sleeping that all day long. And so I ended up just moving my money into other real estate assets. And that's, that's the journey that, that's the journey that I took, but I, you know, and it was at a point where I knew that I knew more and I had the confidence to be able to move it over. I wish I would have done it a little sooner, right? Uh, but luckily, I moved it uh, before the before two thousand and eight. So before when the stock market was at fourteen thousand, instead of when the stock market was or the Dow was at sixty seven hundred. So it was good timing for me to kind of feel that level of confidence to be able to go out there and do it. But confidence comes with competence. Confidence comes with being around the right people. Confidence comes with doing it. Um, and, um, living, breathing, eating, sleeping, you know, gargling, you know, whatever else, what else, whatever else you're doing there. So that was a little bit about my journey. Well, and for those ladies who have, you know, a partner or I have a couple share with us advice on how it is to work together with your partner, because not everybody's cut out for that. And, and sometimes it's a good idea and sometimes it's not. So give us some of your tips and words of wisdom working with your, your husband. 100%. Um, number one thing, I'm going to channel Aretha Franklin here, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, um, respect. I mean, we have incredible amounts of respect for each other, um, which allows us to give each other a lot of leeway and a lot of trust. Um Phil and I, we more duplicate each other than we complement each other. We're both left brain. Um, so, so, you know, and, and I often, I often, uh, uh, quote, um, um, I think it was Grace Kelly, what she said about Fred Astaire, which is I can do everything he can do except backwards and in high heels. And I said that quote all the time. So they, so for those of you guys who don't know, they were dancing partners, right? And they would do these very elaborate dances. And and for Phil and I, I can do everything he can do except backwards and in, and in high heels, which is 
a little bit of a tougher task, you know, if you think about it, right? But um, yeah, we just have a, a tremendous amount of respect for each other. Um, and, and and I think that's the basis for everything. You know, uh, there there's yelling, screaming fights. Uh, but what I will say is those yelling, screaming fights are like, you know, we just, we just need to make, we it's out of love. Like, you know, no, this needs to be better. You know, it's like, I'm going to tell him it something needs to be better. And he's going to tell me something needs to be better. So we're both headed in that same direction of wanting that greater good and wanting that. Um, um, yeah, just, just, it, it is something that is part of my DNA and it is something that is part of Phil's DNA. I am, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, just in the gender roles, you know, women sometimes will say like, I have a problem. I just need to talk it out. And the, and the male gender role is I have the solution for you. And, you know, for me, I'm kind of lean more to, you know, I'm, I'm going to solve something, right? It's like, it's like, this is, this is like, I'm, I'm ready for my close up right now. I'm not going to solve. So we're a little bit opposite like that. So when he needs me to be a little softer, it's like, I can't stop solving, you know? <laughs> and, and so we have some kind of funny moments like that, but I will tell you like anytime that either of us are down, we have the same answer for the other one, which is just work harder, just go and work harder. Um, there is something that is incredibly relieving about production. There is something incredibly relieving about work. Um, and, and have it, you know, if you just have a plan, like I want to, you know, um, I want to get rich, right? Let's, let's say that is your plan. That's, that's, that's going to create anxiety because that's general ambition. But if you have a specific plan and a specific direction, well, that creates excitement, that creates drive, that creates the, I want to get up at five o'clock tomorrow morning because somebody needs me on my A game. And that to me is, is something that Phil and I both share. We know that someone in our lives, someone in our community uh, needs us on our A game and we want to show up on our A game. So that, that, is, that is a big basis of, of our success as, as a couple. Um, you know, he is my rock. Uh, he is my everything. Um, I I'm very, I'm very blessed to have, you know, just a team player with me. Um, and, 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 um, you know, we do have our roles in the organization. So sometimes he'll step into my role and sometimes I'll step into his. And if we step a little too far, we let the other person know. It's a little funnier when I do it than when he does it. Um, but when he tries to tell me what to do on my part of the house or my part of the business, I get to tell him, don't worry your pretty little head. <laughs> <laughs> and that is so fun to say to, i'm not gonna lie that is fun to say to a man but when you say that to a woman those kind of fighting words you know yeah. so there, there is a little double you know uh, uh um uh, a different side of that right so uh but we know each other's role we give each other a lot of leeway and a lot of trust because we both know we are workers um and 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 we know that we are kind of going for that greater good and um, yeah, we're very aligned. And I think having those, you know, conversations about alignment, you know, for Phil and myself, we talk about our touchstones, like the things in our life that are important to us, you know, so it's, I think a lot of people put wealth first and then, and then health and then ha happiness, right? When it should be, we should kind of rework the order. And, but it's something just kind of built into, you know, our DNA and our soul, uh, socially and our culture. Uh, but, but some of our touchstones are our wealth and our health and our happiness and our relationships and, you know, our family. And those are things that, you know, we'll ask each other, how, how are you rating on one of these scales? So it's kind of a check-in process. And I think checking in with, you know, your business partner and, you know, also the person that you love, really critical to, uh, really critical to success. And um, yeah, so does that give you, does that give you a little yeah, bit of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was super helpful. I mean, you answered my next question, so I'm kind of going to reframe it because I really liked what you said about the second shift will say when we talked about that career break stick, I mean, you do, you do have, I think one child, right? 
Yes. Yeah. You have, have, a, you have a second, yeah. Okay. So I wanted to know about the gender roles and because typically it's women will stay home and there's a man who will go to work and how, how did you bring patterns? I'm guessing it's because you set this up from the beginning. You guys sat down and really talked about it. Did you guys do that from the beginning and then had the mental, like the actual check-ins or are you guys really just, how did this come about? Like, did you just sit down, sit down and say, I'm going to do real estate? Cause I want to know how this works. <laughs> Cause I want to um, know how you got, got this to start out for the two how, of you. How, how we got, you mean started? You mean? Well, no, just really like, I mean, you really broke those patterns, these traditional gender roles of, you know, both of you are really, really working together. You've really figured it out. How'd you do it? Well, I'll tell you, um, <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. I um, love it. When we first started investing, Bill said, um, listen, um, you need to get a realtor's license. And at that time, um, I had, had a little more piss and vinegar inside of me. So I, at the time I said, F you, you go get a realtor's license. I don't want to be the realtor. No offense to the realtors that are on. So we, you know, uh, we drew straws and I picked the short straw. Okay. Um, and you know, it's, 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 it's interesting. You know, I'm like, I'm, I am, a, I am an MBA. I couldn't, I could never be a, you know, it's like, and even I, you know, and people did confirm that thought, you know, I had some people say like, you're an MBA and now you're a realtor. Like what happened? You know, I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, hold on time out, time out. It's like, I'm not going to explain to you my entire game plan, but I have it. So I can, you know, so, you know, when I think the perfect investor team is the agent investor and the non-agent investor, okay? So I can access things that he can't, but he can say things that I can't. <laughs> but it's a, it's a great team. So I took one for the team. I did not want to be, in fact, you know, whenever someone says to me, well, you're the realtor, right? I'm like, you know, no, I'm I'm so much more than that. No offense to any other folks on the on the call that are realtors, because we, you know, every success you will not be a successful real estate investor unless you have a powerhouse investor friendly realtor on your power team. Period. The end. Goodbye. Do not pass go. You got to have that person. Um, at the time when we got started, we didn't have the fill in Shinoa that needed to say, no, 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 Shinoa, don't get a realtor's license. Just leverage somebody else who already has a realtor license. Like every time, you know, I I'll challenge you guys. Every time you get in an Uber, ask them, do you do any real estate? And I can almost guarantee you the one out of four of the Uber drivers have a realtor's license. We don't need, the world doesn't need more realtors, right? We have more realtors than we have listings on the MLS, right? I mean, think about that. But at the time, I didn't have someone coming to me and say, no, don't do that. You know, it's, it's funny, one of my girlfriends, um, you know, she's like, oh, you know, Shanoa, um, my significant other uh, got me realtor school for my birthday. I'm going to be just like you. I'm like, time out. No, 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 no. You just, you just get a realtor. Don't be a realtor. There aren't enough realtors. Like you go focus on the high dollar activities. The highest dollar activities are going to be the investing activities. Um, and it's easy to get, you know, and, and for the people who come to me and say like, well, I'm thinking about getting my realtor's license. I said, oh, that's great. That's perfect. I have to get your realtor's license. Then, um, you know, you could probably save a lot of money if you got your electrician's license too, you know, and then, and then of course you need your plumber's license. Right. And then you got to learn how to go put on a roof. And then it's like, and when the heck are you going to ever have time to be a real estate investor? You're not, but that's the mindset of, I want to save money. I want to, you know, have acts, you know, I'm not going to, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a limited, um, uh, limiting belief type of a mindset. So the faster you're able to let that go, the faster you're able to grow to that next level. And part of that too, is being willing to fire yourself from roles that are now beneath you. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's, you know, some of you guys, like, I mean, I say like all the time what got you there, what got every single one of you to where you are today is also going to keep you there. As we grow in our mind, our knowledge, our business, we have to shed and let things go 
in order to grow up to that next level. So, you know, when I think of um, one of my favorite books uh, back here, Darren Hardy's book, it's called The Entrepreneurial Roller Coaster. And one of the things, so Darren Hardy uh, was the publisher for Success Magazine. So he spent, you know, part of his lifetime in, uh, interviewing other successful uh, business owners. And he would always ask them like, hey, give me advice. And one of the advice, the, the one of the business owners said, hey, fire yourself as soon as you can. Darren's like, what? What do you mean? He said, yeah, for, first fire yourself from taking out the trash, then fire yourself from doing the accounting and then fire yourself from, you know, doing the this and then fire yourself from doing the that until you're only doing one thing. And that, you know, so, and, and I, I give a little uh, talk about this. I, I gave it in March of this year. I get, I'm going to get to give it again uh, in October. It was called blow the doors off of 2024. And I talked about firing yourself and I talked about letting go of some of the minimum wage activities and, you know, some, and you also mentioned like the gender roles, right? Mm -hmm. Well, some of those minimum wage activities that are, you know, that are maybe some more gender role specific, right? They flow in some cases to, you know, the, the women. It's like, I am a, you know, cutthroat, like I, you know, in terms of like what I will not do because I don't want taking out the trash to get in the way of my greatness. I don't want cleaning the house to get in the way of my greatness. I don't want, you know, you know, make so I'll, I'll do a little meal prop, but I don't want to make, you know, making meals and cleaning up after, you know, I don't want to get that to get in my, in the way of my greatness. Somebody needs me on my A game and my A game is not doing the laundry period. Right. So, you know, and, and I will tell all of you guys, um, I think, I think one of the, things I see a lot of people do is they'll, they'll uh, bring in someone to work on the customer facing activities. And that's the first person that they bring into their business. It's like, no, don't, don't bring anybody in. You're not ready to bring anybody into your business yet. And the last person that you're going to replace is you on those customer uh, facing activities, especially if you are the rainmaker, right? So I talk, the book talks about uh, being the rainmaker. And the, but the first thing you should do is fire yourself from the non-customer facing activities, the things that are holding you back, right? The things that are like, oh, well, I should be cleaning the house. No, it's like, I don't, I can, like, I got, I'm so over, I can leave a dirty dish in the sink. And I'm, this is for some of you guys, it's going to be like gross, but I don't leave it in there. And I'm going to have somebody else come and clean up so I can go and make money to be able to create economies that include and serve other people. That's, you know, it's like, you know, my housekeeper is like, can I bring you water? Can I bring you this? Can I bring you that? You know, it's like, she knows, like, if I'm, if I'm doing a dish, I'm not going to be able to afford to pay her. So literally, I've told my assistants, like, if you see me doing a minimum wage activity, like slap, you know, if you see me with a broom or, or a mop or, or a vacuum, slap it out of my hand, because I'm not going to be able to sign your check if I'm holding one of those things, period. And, and the people who work for me who get that, and I hope I don't sound like a bougie jerk because some people are like, oh, dang, she's, you know, um, but I, I, it's, it's just because I have, I have bigger things that are, that are on me, that are on my purpose, that are on my passion and things that make me, they give me joy and make me happy. So sometimes you have to let go of those things in order to, you know, be the true rainmaker and um, be what, you know, God has put us on this beautiful earth to be able to, you know, do and enjoy. Yeah. You got to keep the main thing, the main thing. I love that. I'm glad you said that my husband's cooking dinner for me right now. So oh, huge. Love that. Um, that leads me into my next question. Uh, you've trained over 87,000 investors. It was a big point that I love to make when I was introducing you. What are the most common mistakes new investors make and how do you guide them through those challenges? Oh, that's a great question. Um, gosh, and this could really go in so many different ways. I know. I know. Uh, probably <laughs> the most heartbreaking thing for me is when a new investor is in a bad deal. Yeah. And I can see the writing on the wall and I'm like, you're, you're going, you're going to lose money on this deal. And I've literally had to tell people you'll, you'll lose less money if you just walk away from this terrible deal then you will lose if you take this deal all the way to the finish line. Welcome to real estate investing. You know, it's like, I feel like a jerk. And then we have these cognitive biases, you know, like this fear of loss kind of that will hook into us and, and, and in some cases stop us from doing the next right thing. Um, but that's probably one of the 
um, most heartbreaking things that I see as a as a real estate investor. And, you know, we have this saying, which is there's only one thing that's worse than bad advice. And that's bad advice from a trusted source where, you know, someone says, well, my realtor or my broker or my banker or my friend or my, you know, you know, the wholesaler or, or insert person who's, you know, serving themselves. Uh, that's, that's probably the most heartbreaking thing. Um, and then I also run into people who, you know, for the last 20 years who want to argue with me about how now's not the right time to invest in real estate, you know, 30 some odd million dollars later, you know, I'm sorry, I'm just not buying that anymore. <laughs> You know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, and some, sometime I'll, you know, kind of, I'll, you know, it's like, I want to, I want to meet people where they're at. That's part of my commitment. Um, so, but, but, you know, if, if I'm getting in a heated argument with someone, I'm like, you know, you're, you're not ready for me, but there are a lot of other people who are, and those are the folks that I want to spend time with. That makes sense. It's hard though, you know? especially when they say you're not ready or they don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, are you coachable? Like I, I want to be around, I, like I, I am humble enough to know that every single day I learn something new in real estate. And most people you talk to have been doing it for 20 years. They're going to say, I know everything. You know, nothing. The second you stop learning, the second you stop growing is the second you start falling behind and, and, and people need us on our A game more than ever. And, and sellers and buyers and brokers and bankers, like uh, they'll know, they'll know. So if you are, um, if you're not humble enough to uh, um, get, you know, back into the, put, put back on the training wheels, you're going to have a problem. And I, I read an interview uh, that Tim, Tim Ferriss did, and it was about this woman who was, you know, MBA, you know, running a company and then went to go and be an intern in her forties for someone else. It takes a lot of bravery to be able to, and a, and a change in identity, right. To go and say like, this is my passion now, and this is the direction I'm going to go, go in. But I think it's, um, was it, was it Alvin Toller who said, um, oh gosh, I'm probably going to mess this up. Um, the, uh, Oh gosh, goodness. Um, the people who will fall behind are not the illiterate, but instead they're the people who are unwilling to learn, unlearn and relearn. And, you know, we always got to put ourselves through our paces and we always got to put ourselves through that process. And um, we have to be humble enough to, to be able to, to, to show up in that way every day. Um, so yeah, I think that's, I think that's, I think that's critical and, and, and I'm still, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I, and it is, it is hard. It's like, it's embarrassing to say, well, what does that word mean again? Or what, what is that? It's like, cause you don't want to look like an idiot, but I'm, 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 I'm more okay looking like an idiot in at 51 than I ever was at 15. And, um, the saying, a saying that set me free was that in your 20s, you really worried about what other people think about you. And in your 40s, you don't really care what other people are thinking about you. But in your 60s, you realize, well, heck, they weren't even thinking about you in the first place. So it's okay. It's just okay. Ask the questions. Um, greenfield it, you know, uh, get uncomfortable. Um, that's just part of a process of growth. Uh, I'm dedicated to it. I'm a reader. I'm a stud. I'm like listening to all the podcasts and reading all the, I mean, like I am, I, I love it and, and I want to grow and I want to share what I'm learning with others because number one, it gives me a little bit of a volunteer's high. So we've all kind of had that volunteer's high, right? Um, and then when I share it with others, it allows me to get my reps in and practice it. And when I'm getting my reps in, there is just some deeper connection that you're able to get that makes you deeper in your craft. I'm going to share my screen again because we have an amazing event. Shanoa, do you want to share the news? Uh, what are we doing this weekend? 
Oh, yeah. So this is going to be a lot of fun and a great learning experience. So we are joining Massive Capital this weekend in Dallas and um, talk about blowing the doors off of 2024. Guys, it is October the 1st, okay? You have one quarter left, one quarter left to really grow and really set yourself apart for 2025. Some people, their mindset for all of this year was stay alive until 2025, okay? I want you guys to be coming out of the gates, finishing 2024, blowing the doors off. And the way that you do that is you associate yourself with people who are doing and on the path and have done the things that you want to do. It just, they they can tell you there's a pothole over there. You don't want to go over there. There's a sand trap over there. You got to be careful about this. Um, this is the way, hey, if you want the shortcut, you know, some people say there's no shortcuts in life, but if you're learning from someone who's already like made the mistakes, Oh yeah, you just you just listen listen to that. So we are teaching a class this weekend, October fourth, fifth, and sixth uh, in Dallas. Love to see you guys there to join us. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be teaching. My husband's going to be there. Mike's going to be there. Sharar's going to be there. Sanjay's going to be be there. And this is what we're bringing to it as well. So um, uh, massive is um, a lot of multifamily. Um, a lot of triple net leases and a lot of land development. We're also bringing other folks who are in other asset classes, whether it's mobile home parks, don't judge. That is, you know, you guys talked about cash flow earlier. That is a cash cow, right? RV parks, right? Um, residential assisted living. So we're going to bring in and complement a lot of uh, the massive success with some other asset classes, again, to be able to grow. And for me, um, I like to think of myself as asset class agnostic, okay? If there's a deal and if there's an opportunity to make money, I'm going to jump into that, right? I'm not, I'm not, atta I'm attached to the outcome, which is success, making money, building wealth, bringing other people along for the ride, but I'm not attached to the asset class or the vehicle that I'm doing it in, right? Um, so I don't care if you want to take Uber X or Uber XL, right? So there are ways to be able to get there. Uh, we're going to have a lot of folks from the massive team there. Um, I got to tell you guys something that, that probably you guys don't know about this. I mentioned that I'm kind of dedicated to uh, learning, growing. Um, like this, this weekend, October 5th, is also my birthday, okay? Oh. So I'm, I, you know, it's like, you know, and, and when I think about, you know, you know some, sometimes people say like, well, my birthday week and my birthday weekend and my birthday month, you know, it's like, I got to remind everybody, you get a holiday. You don't get out like someone, like one of someone who's very dear to me said like, well, you know, it's the holiday, it's the holidays, it's the holiday months. And she was talking about November and December. And I'm like, no, oh no, 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 no. You get it. You get a day. This is called a day, right? I'm probably gonna take a birthday hour, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I is just because I, you know, I, I want to blow the doors off. Right. And I want to keep learning and I want to keep growing and I want to surround myself with other people that are doing it too. So part of my, sorry, my, my pups in the, in the background celebrating my birthday early. Uh, but, but um, yeah, I want you to think of your birthday as a day to give, not just like cake and, 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 and wine and, you know, whatever, but also give yourself the gift of education. Um, you know, part of my other journey this month is part of my gift of ed education is I'm going to see uh, Alex and Layla Hormozy uh, in Las Vegas. So um, that's that's like I, I went in and I told my husband, I said, listen, honey, um, I, I bought myself a birthday present from you. Um, it was five thousand dollars. You know, I'm taking myself to uh, the Hormozies and I'm going to go and learn from them. And this is this is my, and, and, you know, my husband said, I know what you do. I know what you love and I know how you bring it back to me, to him and to our family and to the people that are around us. So yeah, you go, you go do that. 
Um, so, so that's how I see like giving myself a present and surrounding myself with the people that I love doing the things that I love when I want to do them. So I invite all of you guys to the workshop that we are hosting with massive this weekend. Um, and Jasmine, I'm sure you could, or, uh, you could pop in the uh, link to be able to get registered for it. Um, you're going to learn a lot and you're going to be surrounded by people who are blowing the doors off. And, and, and is just, and that that is just part of their DNA to blow the doors off. So I hope that uh, you guys can, can join us and can take part in that as well. Thank you so much, Shanoa. I think we should end on, if there's no more questions, Shanoa, what she means to you. What my name means? No, she, she. Sorry, oh, she, 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 sorry, she feels on Yeah, so um, so um I think you guys are creating an incredible community. And I think you guys are um, looking for growth. I think you guys are and and just bringing other people along. You guys don't have to do this, right? Uh, this is both a labor of love and, and you are giving a lot before you ask for anything. Right. And that is, I think, you know, it's in line with one of my favorite books, the go giver and, and, and you guys want to bring other people along for the ride and you guys want to grow together in community as, as a community and you want to take the breaks off. And, and you want to take the, the stereotypes away and you guys, and this community is, is going to be, and I know you guys are just getting started with it, but it's going to be a powerful part of, I think a lot of women's journey into changing that first slide or the second slide that you put up there. And I think it's going to be incredibly impactful. And I'm so honored to be a part of uh, this meeting tonight and uh, part of y'all's journey. Um, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored that you asked me to be here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chanel. It's been an amazing uh, call. Thank you guys for having me on. And um, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't give up on this journey. Don't give up on bringing other people along. Uh, you have, a, you've inspired a lot of people already and those folks need you on your A game. And um, I'll just ask that you guys continue that uh, to be able to give back to others. Because what I've found is that as you, as you give, you get, as you build community, um, you build your network, you build your resources, you build that million dollar Rolodex, which is truly the difference between us, you know, greasing the skids and making it easy. Uh, versus us having to do everything ourselves and we don't and the resources are there and you guys are so um, so uh, gracious in providing those so thank you so much for having me on I'll see you guys this weekend take care bye yeah, bye guys. thank you bye we will see you this weekend bye bye everyone thank you for bye. being here